And now we return to the Fifth Estate. San Quentin Penitentiary in Northern California, perhaps America's most legendary death row. Thanks to the Canadian Coalition Against the Death Penalty, inmates here can promote themselves on the Internet. Prisoners don't have direct access to computers, so it works like this. Inmates use regular mail to send documents or text or photos that they want publicized to Canada. From that basement in Scarborough, they're then posted on the World Wide Web few if any questions asked. Anyone who wants to contact that inmate then uses the mail to do it. One of the most notorious residents of San Quentin and of the Canadian website is convicted child killer Richard Allen Davis. On his webpage he wonders if someone is willing to look beyond what the headlines have said. The father of his victim says it's a question Davis shouldn't have the right to ask. This stuff upsets me so much. There's nothing good that can come from promoting these individuals. These guys are the dregs of society. Richard Allen Davis is evil incarnate. Mark Kloss insists anyone sentenced to death in the U.S. should live in a legal limbo where constitutional rights don't apply. He says he's felt that way since the night Richard Davis kidnapped his daughter. Polly was having a slumber party with two of her girlfriends, and at 10.30 at night, she opened her bedroom door. There was a knife-wielding stranger there. He told the girls that if they made a noise, he would slit their throats. He then proceeded to tie up Polly's girlfriends, gag them, put pillowcases over their heads, and steal my daughter into the night. Can I'm famous. <laughs> we then spent the next 65 days searching for Polly. In vain, we found out on the evening of December 5th, 1993, that Richard Allen Davis, the career recidivist, sexually sadistic, psychopathic criminal, had kidnapped and murdered Polly that very evening and had discarded her body on a pile of trash off the side of a highway 50 miles north of Petaluma. It was a case that captivated a nation and horrified almost every parent. In an intensely emotional courtroom, Richard Davis was found guilty of killing Polly Klaus. He has made innocent people suffer. But during the penalty phase, it got so much worse when Davis, deviating from an authorized statement, told a lie so shocking, it's hard to imagine how the Klaus family could bear it. I would also like to state for the record that the main reason I know that I did not attempt any lewd act that night was because of a statement the young girl made to me when walking her up the embankment. Just don't do me like my dad. I have to pay my dues, so should Burn you. Burn hell, Davis. Fuck. Damn, boy. I was prepared for something. I wasn't really prepared for that. But my mother started making some excruciating noises, and I thought, my God, he's killed my child. Now he's killing my mother. This character who had committed this atrocious crime was able to act out in, a, in, a, in an evil way against my family yet again. Mark Kloss has spent the 10 years since harnessing the power of the Internet himself. His website, called Kloss Kids, helps find lost children and track sexual predators. But he says nothing could prepare him for the website belonging to Richard Davis which, like those of virtually every other American death row inmate, is now available, courtesy of the Canadian Coalition Against the Death Penalty. The Victim Services Director for the Attorney General of the State of California called me, told me to sit down and explain to me that there was some Canadian outfit that was hosting websites for American death row inmates, and that one of those websites belonged to the character that had murdered my child. Very few things have made me as angry as that little bit of information. It wasn't long before that anger exploded on American television. Tonight with us live in San Francisco with his feelings on his daughter's killer, Mark Klass. Also in Toronto, Dave Parkinson of the Canadian Coalition Against the Death Penalty's website. I want to thank you for being with us as well, Dave. 
Thank you for having me on. I've seen Richard Allen Davis's website. This is absolutely appalling. This guy is sitting there with beefcake pictures of himself. He's excusing the atrocities he committed against my child. This is beyond almost anything I can conceive you know of. What? Mark, let me give Dave a chance to respond to that. Dave, if your website is to allow them to prove their innocence, why the pen pals and the love connections? Well, again, what we want to do is show the world the human beings that the United States government has sentenced to death. These I mean, are not most... human beings, well, sir. If these were human sir, beings, if they could, wouldn't have committed Class, the crimes that they committed. Finish. We look at this not necessarily from a crime and punishment perspective, but as a human judging? rights Who are you to be judging what goes on in this country? The they, international... Who are you? Mr. No, Class, the international... The international, the international you look at me, buddy. You look at me and you tell me, in any good conscience, how you can allow my daughter's killer to have this website. You he tell me... to death by the United States government. That's exactly right. But he deserves gentlemen, hold to die on. for what Mark, he did. Hold on, Dave. There's Question. very little that can be done about these people short of hacking their third-rate, lousy site and eliminating them from the web once and for all. Mark Kloss says, you know what? This is a man who kidnapped and tortured and molested and raped and murdered my 12-year-old daughter. And in many cases, um, the individual is right. The, 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 pr the prisoner is guilty of the offense. In the case of Mr. Class, we have corresponded via email in the past, and we have explained again that if the United States government was not sentencing these individuals to death, there would be no need for us to be posting that information on the web so that the world is aware of exactly who the government is putting to death in their name. The Canadians' internet campaign has made them very unpopular in many parts of the U.S., especially Arizona, where the battle over inmate internet access was about to be joined. Here at the Arizona State Prison in Florence, a man named Bo John Green awaits execution. He's admitted he murdered Roy Johnson, a college music professor from Tucson. He was a passionate person. And I loved to play duets. Of course, I'm not much of a pianist, and he was outstanding. But he loved me, so he played duets with me. They seemed made for each other. Roy Johnson and the woman whose parents had named her after their favorite song, Stardust Melody. Roy and I were very happily married. We always held hands. He always touched me. We smiled and loved each other. Their life together was full of family and music, until that night eight years ago when Roy Johnson performed at a concert and never came home. I was trying to read and I was really having difficulty because I was worried. And the words were kind of jumping around on the page and about 11 o'clock I was overwhelmed with this feeling that I never had before and I stood right up and I said out loud, he's never coming home. And I kept pacing and having that feeling I was never going to see him again. A massive search began in the air and on the ground. When Roy Johnson's car was discovered, police were convinced he had been murdered. It took three days to find his body. With his death, my life was devastated. Absolutely devastated. I didn't know how I could live without him and I didn't know that if I could. Bo Green, a local drifter and drug addict, was charged with the murder. At his trial, Stardust Johnson listened as Green described the drug binge that led him to kill her husband. Generally, when you're coming down off methamphetamines, when you're starting at Jones, that's when you become violent and I've seen it happen. He just opened the door of the car when Roy was stopped and Roy was startled and tired and shoved him over and got in the car and this bit of human filth beat him to death. Roy suffered four major fractures to his skull, one here, here, two here, here, and multiple radiating fractures so that his skull was soft to the touch. And I hate that. Upon our oaths, do find defendant, Bo John Green, guilty of first degree murder as alleged in count one of the indictment. Green was sentenced to be executed and shipped to Arizona's death row. Stardust Johnson says she consoled herself that he was out of her life forever. Then she saw this, Bo Green's webpage. I saw him and I just was utterly appalled. 
He was pictured there holding a fluffy cat. He was soliciting women to write to him. He said that he was lonely on the row and he needed company. He didn't say that he murdered anybody and he didn't say that he was a vicious killer. She had first learned about the existence of that site from her daughter Jennifer. When I saw that he was on the site, I just went sort of weak and became really upset and very angry. And I actually downloaded this man's picture and threw it on the ground and stomped on it. Back in Canada, Dave Parkinson and Tracy Lamory aren't unsympathetic to the Johnsons, but they are sticking to their guns. Stardust Johnson says the man who crushed her husband's skull in four places and left them lying in the desert has forfeited his right to express himself in the way he wants. If we're to be judge and jury over these individuals when they write us, whether they're claiming they're innocent or guilty, and pick and choose which individuals we will represent on our webpage, then we're going to be censoring out many individuals who may be wrongfully convicted or may be, or may be completely innocent. Bo Green does not deny no. No. at this point that I'm aware that he murdered Roy Johnson. No, he doesn't. But again, he is going to be murdered by the state of Arizona. And as I said, it's our right and responsibility to let the people of the world know this individual has been sentenced to death by the United States government, the state of Arizona, and allowed to be seen. But there is yet another twist to the plot of this story. Jennifer, the daughter of Stardust and Roy Johnson, is also a lawyer for the state of Arizona, whose job is drafting new laws for the legislature. When she stumbled across that Internet picture of her father's murderer, she says she knew exactly what she had to do. I've never had such a personal reason to prepare legislation before, but for me it really was about protecting people because I see prisoners on the Internet like the man who killed my father. The prison pen pal site, they're there to connect prisoners with people for social interaction, whether it be solicitation of money, pen pals, looking for a girlfriend, People really don't understand that prisoners are so very manipulative. And you don't know what kind of harm you may be putting yourself into. Corrections officials in Arizona welcomed the legislation. They'd already uncovered several schemes involving abuse of the Internet by death row inmates, including one daring escape plot at the state prison. It was early one summer morning back in 1997 and a crew composed of death row inmates was working on the other side of this fence, outside the prison yard. Suddenly, a car pulled up and stopped at the fence. A woman jumped out and began firing at the officers guarding the inmates, first with an AK-47 rifle, then a 357 Magnum handgun. She would turn out to be the wife of one of those death row inmates. Double murderer Floyd Thornton had married a woman named Becky, who had answered his personal ad. I think you are the most beautiful person I've ever known in my life. And I just love you so dearly. I do. I really do. When she decided to free her husband, she used the Internet to find people willing to help her purchase guns for the escape. But when she realized the plot was doomed, she shot her husband, and a guard shot her. Both Thorntons died. Arizona prison officials say their investigation revealed that death row inmates, whose visits and phone calls are strictly controlled, were using the web to make contact with and often take advantage of the outside world. We got to look in and there seemed to be a common connection through the internet. Arizona corrections official Gary Phelps. We found a number of women that were being manipulated. Uh, I can account to one lady that sold her condo and gave all the money to the inmate and that they were if you will, scamming people uh, worldwide. There's so many things that we're charged with trying to control, and the Internet has just destroyed that capability, I think, because we can't monitor the Internet. So with support from prison officials and the public and testimony from its author's widowed mother, Arizona voted to enact the new law. The law passed by the Arizona legislature is known as House Bill 2376. And in a nutshell, what it did was make it a crime for any Arizona inmate to have what was called access to the Internet. Not only directly, but also through a third party that might maintain a website. In other words, an organization like the Canadian Coalition Against the Death Penalty. 
When we return, the Canadians fight back, taking on the state of Arizona, defying American public opinion, and that new internet law.